All right, welcome to our first lab for the DP600 uh, course. In this lab, we're going to be creating a Microsoft Fabric Lake House. Uh, as you can see, my screen is split into two. We have the Microsoft Fabric portal on the left-hand side and the instructions on the right-hand side. In this uh, lab, we're going to be creating a Microsoft Fabric Lake House, and this lab is going to take us approximately 30 minutes to complete uh, if you're completely new to Microsoft Fabric. But since I am quite familiar with Fabric, it will take us about 15 minutes to complete this lab in this video. So let's get started. The first step is going to be to create a workspace. So for that, we're going to navigate to the portal, go to the area where it says workspaces and create a new workspace. Let's give this workspace the name DP600 Lab 1 and just uh, make sure that we are using the fabric uh, trial capacity. Uh, in this case, I'm going to be using the fabric trial capacity, but when you do get access to the labs, you'll probably be using a fabric capacity from down here. It will be mentioned in the instructions. The instructions will be updated by that time, so you should not have any uh, problems creating your workspace with the appropriate capacity. And I'm going to hit apply. That's our first task done. We have created an empty workspace. The second task is to create a lake house. For that, we're going to go to our create button on the uh, left hand side menu. And we're going to scroll down and you can see we have an option to create a lake house. And we're going to give our lake house a name, DP600 uh, Lab 1, same name as our workspace. And we're going to hit create. This takes about a minute or so. And then we will have a new lake house created. There you go. We have our lake house created. And you can see the lake house has two sections, the table sections and the file sections. The table sections is where we're going to be creating our delta tables, uh, which we can then query using SQL semantics. The file section is where we're going to be storing our data files in the one lake directly. All right. We can also create shortcuts in the file section to access data that is stored externally and not in the one lake. All right, so for now we have created this empty lake house. Let's go and up upload some data to this lake house. For this, uh, you will need to download a sales.csv file. Um, I already have it downloaded on my local computer. Uh, so what we're gonna do is uh, jump to the next step and create a new subfolder named data. So here you go, I'm just gonna click on those three dots new subfolder data and in the data file now i'm going to upload a file and let's navigate to uh, my downloads folder and you can see i have a sales csv file there already and i'm just going to click on upload this takes um, a couple of seconds and then we will have the data in our lake house. All right, there you go, now it's uploaded. So I'm just going to refresh my lake house and then we will see the data uh, inside this data subfolder. We have the sales CSV folder and I can just click it to see a preview of its contents as well. All right, there you go. We have our data here. All right, um, next, let's explore shortcuts. Uh, we mentioned shortcuts, that we can create shortcuts in our file section uh, of our lake house um, to access data that is not internally located on our one lake, but it's stored externally. So in order to create a shortcut, we have a couple of external sources uh, that we have connectors for, like Amazon S3, Amazon S3 compatible, um, Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2, Dataverse, Cloud Storage, um, Google Cloud Storage, and also other um, internal sources. For example, if you have another lake house sitting in um, uh, sitting in another workspace, for example, and you want to access that lake house data internally from within your lake house, you can do that using the Microsoft One Lake connector. All right. Um, so well, we have explored shortcuts. Now let's take a look at the table section. 
So in the table section, we want to add some data. So let's navigate back to my sales.csv file and let's load this data directly to a new table. We're going to give the new table a name called sales and we're going to use a separator uh, for comma because it's a comma separated values file. And I'm just going to click on load. This will take you a couple of seconds as well because it's loading the CSV file into a managed delta table. All right, there you go. So let's go back to our Explorer and I'm going to just click on the refresh button once again just to make sure that I have my sales table here. So you can see I have my sales table here and if I click on the sales table I will be able to see my data in a very neat table like structure. Let's do that again. There you go. So you can see I have my data here which is much better than the CSV format that we were looking at through the file section. All right um, now that we have uh, loaded the data there we can also take a look at the files that are actually feeding this table, which is because it's a delta table, it's uh, stored in parquet files, but it also has that delta log, which was going to record all the transactions that you're going to do on that table. All right, now let's go and try to query this data that we have put in this table using SQL. For that, we're going to move to the SQL analytics endpoint And for example, here we have our sales table that we have added to our table section now appears under the DBO schema um, in tables. All right. So in order to query this table, we're just going to click on this little uh, button here, which says SQL and create a new SQL query. And it opens up. It gives me this little SQL query editor. I'm just going to copy the code which I have in the instructions here and I'm just going to paste it in here and let's run this code. Okay, so it took us 9 seconds, 521 uh, uh, milliseconds to get the results of the SQL code. Great. This is um, all great. We can run some SQL code, but what about uh, people who are not quite familiar with writing SQL code? How do they query this table? Uh, we can also create a new visual query. Visual query is for people who want to query using SQL semantics, but are not very comfortable uh, writing SQL code. All right, so let me drag and drop my sales table in there. See if it has loaded in here. Let's do that again. Just going to drag and drop my sales table. There you go. It's taken a bit of time, but now you can see I have my data here. Let's collapse this Explorer view so we have a little bit more space on our query. And now I can run some pretty quick uh, transformations. Like for example, we can choose columns and say, I don't want all of the columns, just my sales order number and sales order line uh, number um, columns. So we're doing a sort of like select in this case uh, for people who are familiar with SQL. And then I'm going to go to the transform and add a group by. Here I'm going to select the sales order number and we're going to say line items. And the operation is going to be count distinct values. All right. And here we are going to select the line or uh, sales order line number instead of sales order number. And with that, we're going to click OK.
All right, so now you can see we have grouped by sales order number and we have for each sales order number, how many line items we have for that sales order. All right. All right, so that's a very, very quick way of uh, creating a visual query without having without having to uh, write any SQL code. Um, the last but not the least uh, task is going to be to create a report. For that, we're going to uh, go to, um, to our model layout. So you can see I have the model layouts button right here to see the data model schema. So I'm just going to collapse this for a second. And you can see we have all of these uh, tables in here that get created automatically, mainly for monitoring of your um, lake house. But we have this sales table here, which we have created in our lake house. Right? This is a table that we are interested in. Um, so now that we have seen the schema of our, um, of our model, uh, we can then go to the reporting tab and click on new report. So this button here is a new report button and that's going to be creating a new report with that sales table. I do not want to use the other default tables in there. All right. So you can see we get this really nice Power BI uh, view here with filters, visualizations, data. So what we're going to do is I'm going to um, select item and quantity. By default, a table visualization um, gets selected when you create, use a uh, categorical value and a numerical value. We're going to change that uh, to the clustered bar chart, which is this one. And I'm just going to make that full screen and I'm just going to collapse the visualization pane so I can see that a little bit better. And that's it. And I'm going to save this as a report. Let's name this report the item sales report and click on save. There you go. We have created a report from the data which we have uploaded into our lake house. Now, if I return back to uh, the workspace, you can see I have four items created just by creating the report and the lake house. One is the lake house itself, which has two other items linked to it, which is a semantic model and the SQL analytics endpoint. And finally, the sales item report, which we have just finished creating. And with this, we have come to the end of the slab. Um, thank you for watching.